but a lot of diets do work. But the thing is what's working inside of those fad diets isn't necessarily the diet that you're on. It's making the lifestyle changes that you don't even realize that you're do you know, you're doing, you don't even give yourself the boost that you deserve for making the changes that you've made to be on that diet. Breaking keto 12 months later, the way that I introduced carbs was an entire half gallon of ice cream. Yummy. And I just wanted it so bad. And I yeah. ate the whole, and I felt like death. <laughs> yeah. Because the other thing that's unrealistic as a coach, is if someone comes to you and they're like, okay, I eat once a day, all I drink is Dr. Pepper, and what I eat is canes like that that's me that's I've what i've been before. doing for 11 years you know you cannot expect that person to eat five times a day drink a gallon of water and get 45 minutes of exercise in as soon as they sign up with mm -hmm. you it's not gonna happen meeting people where they are is incredibly important and then setting a long-term goal is great the long-term goal is always i need to lose 50 pounds okay but how are we gonna get there you know because if you don't create the micro goals then you're not gonna be able to make it happen so just finished up a conversation with kayla straub who owns power fit eats power fit meals and maybe even one other power fit. <laughs> they have a lot of stuff going on over there. But today we talked all about fad diets, uh, why to stay away from them, why they don't work. We talked about what a sustainable and balanced lifestyle does look like. And then obviously meal prep, which is what they do best. The things that she said, I guess, really reiterated a lot of my own thoughts. Did you feel the same way? I agreed on a lot of the takes that she had. Um, the fact that making the small changes are so important. And sometimes we kind of oversee that because we want to see the big change we want to see the big weight loss we want to make the massive meal prep or something but it's like no you got to start small you got to start small and i also loved y'all's back and forth trainer exercise where you, you had someone that had a very extremely bad eating habit and then someone who thought they were on the better they were better and they thought they were doing even better than they really thought and she was able to give a really good um set of rules and kind of like coaching to that to those hypotheticals i, I love that yeah so guys uh kayla is a nutrition coach and meal prep specialist so uh, if you've been considering doing meal prep or you're struggling with how to eat, what diet to follow, if you should follow a diet at all, anything like that. Make sure you tune in, take lots of notes, share this episode, like, subscribe, comment below with anything you got, and uh, enjoy this episode with Kayla from Power Fit Meals. So let's get started with telling everyone what makes you so passionate. Obviously, you do food for a yes. living, right? So tell us how that started. What makes you so passionate about nutrition? Um, so I started back out in food in 2018. And um, initially, I was just kind of helping out trainers, you know, do their meal plans, get their food together for them. Um, and then it, it quickly developed into doing that almost solely for the first two years. Uh, then COVID happened. And so we had to switch gears a little bit because gyms closed down. Nobody could do competition shows or anything like that. So I got really deep into nutrition and I started doing lifestyle coaching um, and accountability. And then we rebuilt the menu to kind of cater to that group. And then post COVID, we kind of stayed in both for a little bit. Primarily now we focus on lifestyle change and just normal, you know, everyday people. Um, but I'm passionate about it because there's just a lot of misinformation out there. And, you know, I can only help so many people at a time, but it makes me feel good to be able to pass back the the true, you know, education, but behind like fat dieting, you know, how to debunk that it's not that difficult to make small changes that eventually lead to a whole new lifestyle for you, you know, so on and so forth. Yeah, those are right in alignment with all of our values as well, which is a uh, great to hear. Sure. What got you into it in 2018? Did you go through something personally with, with food or maybe like a journey, uh, you know, some type of story that you have be before that? I'll call it a culmination of things. So yes, I've been through my own journey, uh, rebuilt my whole life since 2016. Um, and diet and exercise was a huge part of that. Mental health is all linked to food. So that's my personal experience. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I think keeps me very passionate about it is that, when you're approaching diet, it's just not about the fastest thing that's out there. You have to work on your relationship with yourself, with food, with everything around you. Um, so that's that's how I feel about it on that note. Um, I was in marketing for seven years prior to this. So there was a gym that I was helping get their marketing stuff together. 
Um, some catering stuff fell through and they needed assistance getting food in for their grand opening. And I was like, oh, let me fix that too. And so I jumped in and did it. And then like that week was when the trainers reached out and were like, hey, have you ever meal prepped a meal plan before? And I was like, no, but give it to me. Um, so then about two months later, I had to make a choice between stable income and wishing for the best. <laughs> and I uh, took the leap of faith and we, we built PowerFit. Awesome. Wow. So it's kind of accidental. Yeah. Even. Yeah. I mean, I've done some stuff beforehand that was like after Hurricane Harvey and stuff, we fed the Cajun Navy, we fed fire departments and things like that. Um, just me just loving to cook and like, you know, pass it out, hot meal type thing. Um, and I've always loved food and nutrition. Food has been a part of my life since I was little. I remember cooking with my grandma. So that's how far I go back with food. But PowerFit essentially did kind of transition me out of marketing into a whole new life, and uh, I found it to be really rewarding. I thought marketing was rewarding, but food and nutrition is. Yeah. Is also, up there. in the beginning, you did all the cooking yourself. Yes. <laughs> How long did that last? Um, so it was me and my husband for the first year, um, and then I think in uh, 2019, I had four people working for me. Um, end of 2019, I officially hired my first employee who's still with me today. She awesome. leads the Friendswood kitchen. Um, and now we have 54 employees. Wow. And over how many locations? Um, we have the warehouse and four stores. Okay. And the yeah. warehouse is where like the bulk cooking happens. Is that mm -hmm. accurate? Yeah. It's like our distribution center. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Well, tell us why so passionate about like eliminating the fat diets. Is that something that you went through? You have personal experience with a friend, family member or something? Or is it just like what you see out there and you know that it doesn't work? Yeah, I think that's just um, like I think one of my niches for coaching is is catching people who are coming off of some sort of fat diet. Um, at first it was phenamine. Then it was, you know, other shots. It was HCG. It's keto. It's, you know, all these different things. There's a few diets that I do support. One of the biggest ones is Mediterranean, but I support it because it's a balanced diet. Mm -hmm. um, so I've had, you know, people come to me. I primarily coach women, and a lot of fat diets really wreck people's hormones. And so um, being able to, you know, see that over and over and over really kind of helped develop what my passion is in coaching. And it's making sure that people do not come to me like, Hey, can you please put me on keto? Can you please tell me how to do, you know, HCG? Although I, I can't do that anyways, cause that's medical. I'm the first one to tell you, please don't do that. Don't do it. Um, because where people fall short in that is that they don't have the proper education. You know, um, the people that are giving the diets out, they're making their money off of you signing up for the diet and then that's it. And they also have a very kind of like one size fits all approach a lot of the time. Um, and, and people are left without education. And I keep going back to that because if you get the proper education on how your body works and what you need to have, then you don't need a fat diet. You just learn how to live in your life, you know? Um, and people that try to make very extreme changes too, it doesn't end up working out beyond the period of time of whatever the diet asks for. So you end up on this, you know, giant yo-yo and it doesn't work out. So how would you define a fad diet? Fad diet is going to be anything to me that removes either a major food group, um, or something very valuable to your life or puts you as put, excuse me, puts you in an extreme calorie deficit, um, and it makes your relationship with food really difficult, um, either because you're starving, because you can't have carbs, or like on HCG diet, you can have like no more than 600 calories a day, which isn't even sustainable for anybody. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, any time, you know, fad diet again is is removing anything from your diet that you're not supposed to that you're not supposed to. You know, you're supposed to have a balance of carbs, fats, and proteins, um, dairies, and grains. I know some people cannot because they have dietary restrictions for, you know, allergies or whatever. But um, otherwise, we're meant to have a full diet. We're mm -hmm. meant to have a fully balanced diet. Yeah, I, I like that definition because when I think of fat diet, I always think of time for some reason. I, I don't know why. I've never actually looked up the definition of a fad diet or, or really where that term comes from term comes from, but I always think of it as, as like a time situation. And I like your definition of, uh, the first thing that you mentioned was removing something that's maybe valuable to okay. you. And I remember, I have to admit about five years ago, no, it's more than that. It was probably like 2017. I did keto for a full year 
Sure. I mean, I have two. Yeah. I will say, okay. I get it too. Yeah, I'd like to hear your experience. Yeah. <laughs> but zero, z- uh, zero. Um, what would you call? It? I didn't mess up at all. Like zero carbohydrates. Well, not, not zero, but you know, within. Low. Yeah, super low, high fiber. And after a year, I actually got good results too. I liked it. Um, didn't go through any negativity really, other than one day I was like, you know, I just can't imagine doing something for the rest of my life that doesn't allow me to have a banana. <laughs> like, yeah. That was like the right. realization that came to me. Yeah. And then the only, I guess, the ne- the bad part of the story, and then I'd like to hear your experience. Uh, breaking keto, 12 months later, the way that I introduced carbs was an entire half gallon of ice cream. Yummy. And I just wanted it so bad. And I yeah. ate the whole, and I felt like death <laughs> Yeah. for like two days. And I remember yeah. very clearly. Did you experience something similar or how has that swayed your opinion? So keto, so the thing about keto for me, the, the really difficult part about it, uh, and I guess this can apply to, to several things, but keto specifically, the hard part about that is a lot of the replacement. So people don't break the habit of wanting the carbs. They replace it with fake keto items, right? So true. Those items are not good for you. If you really look and research at all the things that you get, you know, the keto breads and the, you know, all these things that they are glamorizing right now that you can have so that you won't crave rice and you won't crave cinnamon rolls. Um, those things are foreign to your body too. Uh, for, and then, you know, there's, there's also dirty keto, clean keto, right? right? There's the, the keto of, or excuse me, the group that eats all the bacon and cheddar and burgers and all the things. And they just ditch the fries and the bread, but they still take in tons of trans fats and tons of other items, um, that aren't good for us either. Um, and then again, you know, some people are on keto and they lose weight, which is, you know, their main purpose. And some people feel better and that's okay for that group of people because essentially what I have found is that some people do perform better on a lower carb, higher fat diet, and some people perform on the opposite. Um, and, and you either fit one of those or the other, you know, so, so keto can essentially work for some people, but is it sustainable for your whole life? No, it's not. I mean, at some point, you know, you, you are going to need to draw stuff back in and it's not bad foods. It's not finally being able to have a burger with fries. It is what you're saying, like a banana or whatever. Um, and then the other thing that I feel like it does too, is it makes you create this bad relationship with normal food groups like rice or, you know, whole grain pasta or fruit, for instance. Um, and that's not good because subconsciously those those thoughts pass even after keto and you're afraid to eat rice. You know, I've had people come to me and they're like, I cannot eat a half a cup of rice per day. And it's like, yes, you can, you know, yes, you can. Um, so that's really hard. When I did keto, I think looking back on it and I did the strips and all the things, you know, I, this is before I was coaching nutrition. So I needed to lose weight. Um, and I did, I lost like 35 pounds on keto and it worked while I did it. But essentially what I did is I removed all the bad food groups. I didn't eat rice. I didn't eat bread. But I also ate really well when I did keto. I had my salads and, you know, (laughs) um, and chicken breast. So I started making really positive choices. So looking back on it, um, I will tell people when they come to me that are like, I just need a fix. I've been reading about keto. I want to do it. I will typically always encourage that we start out with a low-carb diet first. What so do you that, consider low? Sorry to interrupt. Just, just curious. Uh, low carb, like an example of what I would do for someone who's looking for, you know, kind of the in between that I'm trying to keep away from keto is I'll say, okay, you'll have a small carb at breakfast, maybe a quarter cup of rice for lunch, and then you can have just your veggies and your proteins so for dinner. So between 50 you know? and 100 grams of carbohydrate is what you would consider a low yeah, carb diet? Probably less than 80. Less yeah, than 80. Yeah, okay, less than gotcha. 80. And of course, you know, it depends on if it's someone who's 6'4 and 250 pounds. Of course. But yes. average person, yeah, yeah, I think so. Um, so I will always try to steer towards that because it is essentially still balanced for you to do, you know, low carb versus keto. Yeah. Um, do you have any input as to why when we say the word carbohydrate or carb for short, why does everyone immediately think cakes, cookies, ice cream and not think fruits and vegetables? What's going on with that? I think most of the problem is media driven everything. Um, I don't know why people put those things together. 
Um, <laughs> Obviously, they're carbs, but they're, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you break it down from a percentage of calories, yeah. most of these items have more fat than carbs, actually. Yeah. And, and the higher part of that is the sugar side mm -hmm. as opposed to the carb side, you know, um, because at the end of the day, nobody looks at jasmine rice as junk food. Right. But they do the cupcake. You know, it's 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 weird. And they associate both as carbs, which yeah. they both have carbs in them. That's right. But it's just the bad foods are usually the combination <laughs> of sugar, which is, is a carb we can call. But it, it's the combination of fats and oils. Yeah. That make the crazy, like I've read a little bit about the way it feels in your mouth, the way that it breaks down, the way that it makes you want to eat more. Yeah. And for whatever reason, everyone associates that stuff with carbs. Right. But carbs are actually really good for you. Yeah, they can be. In the right sources. That's right. Um, how would you define a balanced diet? You've used this word a couple of times, a yeah. lifestyle diet, balanced diet. Do you have a definition of that or is it just something that more includes all whole foods. Yeah. I mean, so two sides to that balanced diet in terms of specifically the foods is having the correct amount of like fats, carbs, you know, in proteins, of course, basically your, your main macros. Um, and then still incorporating some things in like healthy, you know, whole fat dairies, uh, and again, whole grains, things of that nature, and then balanced diet in the larger picture or balanced lifestyle in the larger picture is balanced diet plus stress management, you know, sleep, getting good sleep, um, and you know, there, there's other aspects that go into it, mental health, uh, mm -hmm. for balanced lifestyle, but balanced food wise, you should be able to have your main food groups. I mean, the reason why they promote the pyramid in schools, you know, you'll see dairy, you'll see proteins, you'll see carbs, you'll see fruits. You're supposed to have those things. Um, and going all the way back into like adolescence too, like when, when children come off of breast milk or formula, you start giving them fruits, vegetables, and eventually proteins, you know, our bodies are meant to, to sustain themselves on that. Why do people fight that though? I think people fight the path of, I think they make it the path, path of most resistance because it can sometimes be the slowest yield in results. Mm -hmm. And I think that as a society, we want to have a vice that's supposed to be helping us. And nobody wants to believe that you can just have a balanced diet and exercise and get there. <laughs> like, yeah. that's like, wait, no, that doesn't make that doesn't make sense to people, which, you know, I'm sure you could ask any coach is crazy because that's that's actually the real answer. You know, um, it, it's just hard. It's hard to make changes sometimes without that vice. Some people need you know, um, like appetite suppression or whatever it is. Uh, and you know, yeah, it's just, it's just hard. It's hard for people. <laughs> yeah. It is very difficult. I feel like we live in a world of extremes Yeah, where they think if they don't do something extreme that it's not going to work. Yeah, it's true. And, and as a society too, like if you go even deeper off into looking at like how elevated ADHD and anxiety and depression and all these other things are, now versus 20 years ago, you also have to look at how our food chain has changed. So we have social media and all the things online that make us feel, you know, anxious, but then we have everything that we're ingesting. And in the States, at least our, our menu is built around fast food, Starbucks and all these other things. And it's also substantially cheaper to eat cheap than it is to eat healthy, which is so backwards. Um, but all of those things are tied to mental health, stress management, all of that as well. So do you think that the, the few things you just mentioned there, stress management, mental health and all that stuff, do you think that is playing a role in why these diets don't work? Because if you try to commit to a diet, like one of the fad diets, the, the ketos, the carnivores and, and these various fad diets, do you think that's feeding more stress, more anxiety and that's the reason that they don't work? Or is it deeper than that? Um, so the diets essentially work while people are on them mm -hmm. most of the time. It's the post-diet part that I think is where everybody gets, you know, again, it's back to that, you know, lack of education. Mm -hmm. So for a lot of people, a diet will work, even if it's just a six week challenge, like a lot of gems have six week, you know, challenges and you fall into this form, this form or this form. Um, and essentially what those are doing is just teaching you how to eat on time under some sort of portion. And these are the less like fad diet style 
type uh, things I guess I'm, I'm discussing here as opposed to like keto or mm -hmm. HCG. Um, but a lot of diets do work. But the thing is what's working inside of those fad diets isn't necessarily the diet that you're on. It's making the lifestyle changes that you don't even realize that you're do you know you're doing. You don't even give yourself the uh, the boost that you deserve for making the changes that you've made to be on that diet. Because like every time if you tell someone or if someone tells you, hey, I'm about to start this the six week challenge. It follows with, I also gave up sugar. I gave up mm -hmm. alcohol. I started going to bed on time. <laughs> so um, they contribute it to like, this six-week challenge worked for me. But what really happened is they started making lifestyle changes. Um, and then if the diet doesn't work and doesn't give the instant gratification, they toss it out the window and like, oh, that didn't work for me. It just didn't work for me, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, yeah, I think it is important to realize that the reason any of these diets work is exactly what you said. It's not that keto is magical or the HCG is magical or anything like that. Well, HCG works from just the extreme calorie deficit. Yes. Uh, right. are you, oh, wait, real, oh, real quick. Are y'all saying HCG or HTG? Uh, C. CG. CG. Do you want to, maybe, sorry, you want to explain what that is just real quick, the HCG diet? Yeah, so HCG diet is a diet that you have to go to a medical doctor to get put on. Um, and essentially they, they give you a format. They're all a little bit different. Um, but at the end of the day, they basically tell you that you can't have more than 500 to 600 calories a day, period. That's that's what you get. You can have two slices of Melba toast, some celery, maybe some chicken, Whoa. no sauces, no flavors, no seasonings for the most part, unless they're natural, which I can't necessarily say that that's a horrible thing. But the extreme deficit is bad. People lose weight too fast. And it's not just weight they lose. It's muscle mass, mm -hmm. hair, hormones. Everything goes with that diet. Um, so yeah, yeah 500 a day. Is yeah. yeah. 600, like, 600 is the number that I've heard. You yeah. Use. It's not even enough to sustain you if you slept all day because you were sick. Like your, your BMR can't even be met on that type of calorie. That that's probably like my most hated anti, <laughs> yeah. anti, please. No, you, don't do it. Yeah. You know what frustrates me to all end with that is it's medically supervised. I and that's, I, that's I just four sodas. That's like four sodas. Right. Like yeah. four yeah. cans of soda. I mean, you could it's drink like, four sodas and you'd still lose weight if you don't eat anything else. No, right. that's what I'm saying. That's it. Yeah. Like, that's yeah, insane. Yeah. That's breakfast, lunch, dinner, <laughs> yeah. and snack. You got it. <laughs> but, but yeah, for sure, what frustrates me is that is a medically supervised, there is a doctor that gives that. These weight, anytime you see these weight loss centers, mm -hmm. so if you're yeah. listening to this and you see run, from these weight loss centers. I don't I don't know if you feel the same way, but like, I do. I mean yes. Phenamine was first. Yeah, Phenamine was very popular. Now it's semiglutides. I, I met sorry to get off track here, but I had a client come in recently. Obviously, I'm not gonna mention any names, but this person was on semiglutide and phentermine at the same time. Yeah. Have you heard of it? I've never seen this is the first time I've never read about this online or anything, but I met someone in person, came to our gym, they were doing both. At the same time, medically supervised. Dang. Jeez. That's crazy. Wild. Wild. Well, and I, I mean, not to step off the box, but the doctors make money off of how many prescriptions they write and how many mm -hmm. people they put on it. And, you know, and it's like, here you go. This is going to work for you. This is your magic answer. And uh, as long as you meet one of these 20 qualifications and you can, and, and breathing oxygen is one of them, <laughs> we'll put you on it. Yeah. Like you qualify, <laughs> you know. And that, yes, I'm very anti, like, medical weight loss. I also don't really care for gastric bypass surgery okay. for the same reason. Not that I haven't seen it be successful mm -hmm, for people, mm -hmm. but same thing every time. There's no true education that comes in for it, and so people are assuming this is going to be their answer, and uh, it'll get you to initially where you want to be. And we'll just leave the category of side effects off that list. It might get you to where you want to be, but sustainability can't be there because you didn't learn how to eat different, you know, and most of those also make you afraid to eat anything in general back to where Jasmine Rice is like the same as a cupcake. Mm -hmm. You just don't do it, you know, so um I've seen some of these things be successful for people. Okay? Sure, there's there, success they, stories the, out the there. The bypass, there's there's you a know. good amount of success stories. There but there's some not so great stories. I've met a lot of people in, in my time that had gastric bypass um, many years ago. Yeah. And, you know, I'm talking over 10, 15, 20 years ago. And, you know, they're unfortunately back in their same yeah. 
back, you know. Years later, <clears throat> yeah, this long. Um, when it comes, or did uh, you have I'm some sorry, time? I had one more question about the HCG uh, diet. So y'all said that it's medically um, uh, monitored. So other than the, the the long list, I mean, what? Why would someone even get on that? Like, is it just for like cosmetic reasons, or is it more of health? Desperation. Desperation. Yeah, They're just so. like, man, I just, I've tried everything, quote unquote, uh -huh. and it's just like, this is the only thing that I think can help. Yeah. And yeah. probably the one thing they haven't actually given effort to, and I'd like to ask your opinion on this, with because you've mentioned education several times. Yeah. Why are we not being educated? Is that on the individual, or do you think that's... Uh, not not their fault that they're not being educated. What's going on there? Well, let me give you an example. So yesterday I had a uh, a call with a weight loss clinic that would like to see if we could create a pamphlet for education of diet and nutrition um, while you're on semaglutides. So they're looking for someone to be able to help educate their clients. So I'll give them props for that. They're understanding the doctor who this doctor is understanding that the clients have a need for that. The issue that I have with that is that they don't provide it. None of the medical weight loss clinics provide it. None of the girls that typically work there know how to help educate the clients on it. Um, and your, your question is like, why aren't they? Yes. It's like, I guess, specific, yes. Why? And then also, do you feel like it's the individual's fault for not being educated? Because anyone has the, the information's there. Yeah, the information's there, and I do understand that it's very overwhelming. And mm -hmm. nine times out of ten, too, a lot of people's diets were developed as kids. So to some extent, it's essentially not your fault, right? Mm -hmm. Like, because you know, if you're if you grew up and your parents only gave you frozen foods your whole life, that's probably what you still eat to this day because that's what you know. Um, yes, there's a pl you know plethora of of information that you can find through so many different outlets of like how to change your lifestyle. And I think that you probably easily get overwhelmed too. And you just don't know. Some people don't have the willpower either and that's their struggle. And that's where I think accountability coaching becomes very important for people. Um, what I try to tell anyone that comes to me that's on semaglutide or whatever is if you don't have someone in your corner, and the doctor hasn't taken the time to fully educate you, you need someone in your corner because, mm -hmm. again, you're going to need to make lifestyle changes too. And if you don't know how to do those, then you, you at least need to enlist and find someone. I don't really know why the lack of education is so robust when it comes to people who are ready to make the change and they want to lose the weight, but the last thing they want to do is invest in – helping someone help educate them mm -hmm. um, or just learning more about it on their own. I, I, I don't know why it's the puzzle. It, it, <laughs> it's probably a time thing. It's like, do I want to take the time to learn and then get results? Yeah. Or do I just want the results? Yeah. I will say gratification of like instantaneous results is definitely, it seems to be like the thing that forces people off their willpower. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it just, if you don't get immediate results or you don't lose fast enough, even even with the clients that are on just like their their natural regimen, like losing a half a pound to two pounds a week is like not OK, you know. But for me, I'll tell people from the beginning, whatever happens in the first two weeks should not be expected after that, because mm -hmm. from that point now we're talking about getting in, you know, in depth with what's going on in your situation. And a half a pound to two pounds a week is actually perfect. That's sustainable yes. weight loss. It's easy to keep it off when you do it like that. And typically it's not a miserable process either. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. I do feel like there should be some sort of like safety course of education that yeah. you should have to take, you know, before you do it. But pharma is not built around helping people do things naturally mm -hmm. it's built around the need to have to have this medication in order to continue to you know live or lose weight or whatever it is so yeah and that's quite unfortunate it is but, uh it takes people like yourself out there fighting the good fight <laughs> that's know? why i'm passionate yeah, back to the first yeah, question the, the <laughs> difficult fight out there you have to be yeah. passionate to keep pushing through yeah, yeah. you know uh, i do want to make sure I, I finish our thought from earlier which was making sure that people understand that a lot of these fad diets, what gets them the results is not the diet itself, but the elimination of the cakes, cookies, fast foods, highly yeah. palatable, highly caloric things. Right. But for whatever reason, <clears throat> they intertwine their results to a specific diet. Yeah. And 
I'll give you my opinion, and then you can tell me your thoughts. My opinion on that is that just because eating bad or unhealthy, quote unquote, is so normal. Right. So the types of foods that people are used to eating are out of control. Yes. Do you have an opinion on that? No, I agree. And most people's social life is also built around one of two things, eating or drinking. So true. I mean, as an adult, that's what you do. You know, you sit around and graze, you go have dinner, you go on a date, you have a drink, you sit by the pool and have drinks, you know, like that's what else do adults do besides eat or drink? Like, what do we, what, what do we do? You know? Mm-hmm. Um, so I think that it is, it is difficult to give up certain, certain things. Well, how do we do that? How do we create this sustainable lifestyle? Do you have specifics uh, yeah, that apply I'm, to everyone or so depending on the client, I can give a range of like, you know, follow your diet 80% of the time and 20% of the time live your life. Most people don't do that. And and I'm sure that some co- coaches would argue that's not consistent enough. And in some cases, I'll tell clients 90, 10, it just depends kind of, you know, on what their experience is with their own, you know, lifestyle. And if they've tried anything before, if this is brand new to them. Um, Because the other thing that's unrealistic as a coach that could, I guess, make you a fad coach versus a fad diet is if someone comes to you and they're like, okay, I eat once a day, all I drink is Dr. Pepper, and what I eat is canes. Like, that that's me. That's what I've been doing for 11 years, you know. You cannot expect that person to eat five times a day, drink a gallon of water, and get 45 minutes of exercise in as soon as they sign up with Mm -hmm. you. It's not going to happen. So meeting people where they are is incredibly important. And then setting a long-term goal is great. The long-term goal is always, I need to lose 50 pounds. Okay. But how are we going to get there? You know, because if you don't create the micro goals, then you're not going to be able to make it happen. Um, So I think each case is dependent upon what the person's lifestyle is. Um, but if drinking and entertainment of clients is something that's very big, you know, if that's what they do every day for work or whatever, then you have to be able to make changes around that. So maybe the first week is great. Keep entertaining your clients, but quit drinking at lunch and don't order anything fried. Um, and that's the thing too, is being able to make very, very small changes will actually change the whole course for you without you having to make these damning six week challenges or HCG (laughs) diet choices, you know? Um, but I honestly think the people as as easy as it is maybe for us to be like, yeah, make these simple changes. It's not that simple for people to just simply come up with them on their own. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is very difficult. I'm gonna give you two scenarios and then we can kind of coach them out a little bit. So uh, let's start with, let's say I am the guy I come to you. I'm drinking Dr. Pepper every day. I eat once a day. Uh, what else? What else did you say? Oh, and, and my one meal is canes. <laughs> yeah. How, where do I start? Where do I start? Say the, I'm that person the cane, now. You're the caniac. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's me. Where do I? What do oh, I do? Man. How, how long is it going to take me to make a change? What step one? What am okay. I looking at? So step one is we're only going to have canes once this week. Okay. <laughs> okay? And right. it's not going to be day one. So I can still have canes though. We'll, we'll give you canes this week. Okay. okay. Yeah. Because again, realistic. And, and this is like you're, you're like the client with the most extreme right. need for lifestyle change, right? So we have to be the most graceful with you your first week. Oh, right? that's you're, fair. You're going to go back. So um, you can have canes. You can have canes on Thursday. You got four days, but your first four days, I need you to make some changes. So obviously, if we pull Dr. Pepper all together, you're going to have a headache until Thursday, right, from the caffeine and sugar. So probably what I'd recommend is we actually try to dial in just how much Dr. Pepper you're drinking so we can say, okay, as much as my coaching heart doesn't want to tell you this, you can still have two Dr. Peppers a day, but I also need you to drink three bottles of water. (laughs) You know, so breaking it down into small goals like that. And then um, I would probably recommend for someone that only knows how to go to fast food as their food option that you do enlist in somewhere that has healthy foods. Whether you want to order from PowerFit, another place, or go get salads from HEB, you're going to have to have something right there with you because your mind is used to making your decisions on the fly. So for you, meal prep is going to be very important. Um, usually in an extreme case like that, I won't ask for any more. Let's just make it enough to make you feel successful in week one. And I can get results of that? 
If you can keep up with each goal each week, yes, you could. Okay, so I could do that for a week, and then next week we would assess. Then next week we would reassess, and eventually, as the coach, I would you know draw your your Kane's cheat meal out, Mm -hmm. you know later and later, um, and get you off Dr Pepper. And do you recommend uh, if I can't get that right, should I try something else, or should I just keep shooting? Like if if in week one I go to Kane's twice, and then also on Wednesday I had three Dr Peppers. Should I reassess my goal for week two, or should I just try that again? I think week two, we would try the same goal again. Okay. But props to you for already substantially making progress, okay? Yeah, that, like, that's all I was, I'm glad you mentioned that, because even though I messed up, I did significantly better than last week. Exactly. It, that's what yeah. I was saying about just one change, just making one change. Mm-hmm. You know, even if even if you had to have canes all week and you told me I'm not doing it, I'm eating canes. And I said, okay, fine. Mm. Order double bread and no fries. Let's at least cut down the fried food that's in the box. There you, go. you know, I like, like that. there's ways to make things happen. Yeah. Will you lose weight and make the changes at the rate of speed that your mind might be thinking? No. But, but you will move you will. forward. Yeah. It's about progress, not perfection. Okay. That's right. Um, here's my second example. And this is maybe, maybe not what you see more often, a uh, more common situation, one that I kind of hear a lot as well. Um, I'm in my mid-30s. I don't hate my body, but I don't love it either. I eat pretty good most of the time. I exercise <laughs> in a good week three times a week, but... You know, I mean, life gets busy, and sometimes I only make it once. (laughs) Uh, I probably go for a run, I don't know, a couple times a month. I like it, but life's just crazy, and I can't make it all the time. Yes. Um, I I love eating out with my family. We take the kids out on Friday or Saturday night, and then, you know, a couple times through the week, you know, it's, you know, taking on the way home, I got to pick up some Jack in the Box. Because there's nothing at home cooked. Maybe you hear this more often. Yes. What What do I do? Well, uh, so making changes to the family is something I get a lot of. Because um, uh, going back to like an economical standpoint, it's really difficult for one person to commit to like ordering meals all week when they have a large family, right? Um, but I think the first thing that I would do in this type of situation is identify if the singular person is going to get help first and then we'll pass that, you know, through the family or if they're looking at the approach for the family. Um, if it's the family approach, cause sometimes moms will come to me with this exact thing, you know? Um, and if it's the family approach, then we talk about how to essentially make healthy meals for that week for dinner, for everybody. Like, let's start there. Let's make choices for everyone. Um, but some people know their families aren't ready. So it'll be just working on the first person first. Um, <clears throat> I'm sure you get it all the time. Yes, the people I do. that come yeah. to you that already have the the um, well, I'm essentially it's an excuse for their behavior. Sometimes with the hardest ones because the whole like my life is super busy can trump any reason why you had to make any choice at all. I, yeah, I'm I'm trying to learn <laughs> you know? something right now for yeah. me <laughs> for sure. Yes, yeah, all the time. The hardest part too is what people think. Some when the the hardest person to come to me is someone that says, I don't understand. I eat really good all the time. I eat really good, but I'm, I'm still been the same weight for five years. Um, and I'll ask them, okay, fill out the intake form and send it to me. And their idea of eating good is totally not good. (laughs) You know, like, (laughs) um, and in some cases it is, but it could be very inconsistent and it might just be that they're essentially eating 500 calories a day because they're barely eating because they're very busy and their kids are in school and sports and all the things. And, um, but with that type of approach, usually it's identifying the goal that's going to be the easiest for the client first, because back to the instant gratification thing, if you don't find a way to help somebody start to feel like they're obtaining control of their situation, then they're too quick to give it up. Yeah. So. And in this case, I'm going to double down on your education thing. The person that's eating canes every day knows that they're doing something wrong. They know. The person that I described doesn't know. Yeah. Like you said, they think they're eating healthy every day. They're surviving. They're yeah, doing their best. That's right. Yeah. And that person is the one that actually needs the education. Yeah. But because they're so busy and this and that, it's very difficult to to get that through to yeah. them. You know, um, how many people that come to you in that situation, though, within six months or a year or something like that end up becoming successful? 
a lot. It's it's the small changes. Those people are willing to take the small changes, and sometimes their life's so busy they don't even realize how impactful the change was, or that they even made the change. Mm -hmm. So that is that situation oftentimes yields you know quite a bit of of success. Sure. Yeah, I have one specific thing uh, about this person that I mentioned. Oftentimes, what I see, and maybe you do as well, this they do sometimes eat five six hundred calories a day. But they don't then, even realize it. Yeah, but then come Friday or Saturday or something, the calories come real fast. Yes. And it's just this up and down, up and down, and there's just no consistency. Yeah, and I get that a lot too. I want to be consistent Monday through Friday, but I'm not going to lie. On the weekends, exactly. that's my time. Yeah. And essentially, you restart every week when that happens. So training someone to come into a cheat meal. And for me, what I tell someone is a cheat meal is a, an hour period of time. Okay. So in that hour, if you want to have a beer and a slice of cake and your burger, and that's your cheat hour for your week, then go ahead. But if you take Saturday and you go have breakfast and then you go have drinks and then you go have a burger and then you stop by the ice cream shop, we're starting all the way over on Sunday. Yeah. I always say in one sitting Yeah, is, but same, I'm glad we're on the same page. And usually the other story that I'll tell in this scenario is you're, and actually Mike taught me this, uh, you know, Mike, right? Yeah. Uh, Patterson. I live lean. Yeah. He said that, or he told me one time that your body works in averages. Yes. Minutes turn into hours, hours turn into days, days turn into weeks, weeks turn into months, months turn into years. So if you eat in a 500 calorie deficit Monday through Friday, but in a two or 3,000 calorie uh, surplus, it averages to be the same. Yeah. And that's often what is happening. Sure. You know, so um, just some good stuff there. All right, let's change gears a little bit. Let's talk about meal prep, which you know best, which you do best, right? Yes. So uh, how, how do I get started? I say, I want a meal prep. Uh, I'm that person that I know meal prep is what I need. People tell me all the time that they want to get into meal prep. They don't know how. How do I start? Um, in general or specifically with PowerFit? Uh, in, in general. And then we could talk about how PowerFit fits into that as well. Um, okay. So the first thing to identify is whether or not you have time to do it yourself. If you do, great. Plan it out. Order your stuff in advance. Because if you do that, if you order your groceries for pickup or delivery, you will always avoid the whole like, ooh, but this is on sale, or I could have that at the end of the week. Um, so impulse buying goes out the window when you order ahead, and that's something I recommend always, even if you meal prep everything on your own, um, because that control stays with you and your shopping cart that's online instead of in your shopping cart going down all the middle aisles in the grocery store. Um, but once you've identified if you have time to do it or not, then you know your next step. So if you got time to do it yourself, order your groceries, get everything in, um, <clears throat> I think part of the thing about meal prep is that people get stuck on, I can only eat the same thing every single day. You know, like I can only have chicken, broccoli and rice every day. So there's two parts to that. Either a, yes, that's true, but you can change some of the ways that it tastes or B, like in my case, I'll tell my client to change out the veggie. Um, or you can choose shrimp or chicken. It's your choice. So, you know, you can have some variety in there. Um, so I think that's the other thing too, about meal prepping, um, when people do it themselves, uh, it, they can run stagnant really quick because maybe they only know how to cook things a certain way, or they don't know how to, you know, flip their, their macros to be able to have something different. Um, so again, that can come back to education. A lot of times what I'll tell people when they come to me is order the food at first so you can visually learn what you should be doing. And then we'll work through the education on how you can figure out how to do this on your own. So the other part of that is um, if you don't have time, you have to enlist in help. So uh, in our case, what we do is we have ready-made meals that you can grab on the go. You can order stuff in advance if you want to customize. Um, but the other thing we have is we sell everything by the pound. So you can order everything ready where you just pick it up and you have to uh, measure it out yourself, portion it, put it in the containers, and then carry on. So um, as far as meal prep goes, two different you know scenarios of how you can get there, but... If someone's doing it on their own and they're doing it for the first time, they're thinking about doing it, about how long do you think it would, what time of type, t- time commitment are, are we looking at? First time, 12 hours. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's going to take you all day yeah. and you're going to be the one posting the meme about how many dishes you have and uh-huh. all the things. Um, it is a lot, you know, it's, it's like sleeping for me now. 
Um, but I'm in that industry. I do it all the time. But it can be a lot, especially for people who don't enjoy cooking mm -hmm. and they don't like it, um, or for people who are used to having their Sundays doing other things. But there are things that you can do to be successful. You don't fully have to rely on a, a company to do everything for you. Uh, one of the things that, like, I have on my list of things to do someday. <laughs> it's, a, it's a long list. Uh, yeah, uh, it's a long list. I but I actually would love to create an academy that teaches people how to meal prep on their own. And, yes, I have a meal prep company. But that's also a thing that there's not a ton of it out there. Mm -hmm. Yes, there's TikTok and there's all the things. But some sort of, you know, just, like, academy essentially where you can learn how to do things more efficient and fast. Um, I'll give you an example. We do not pan fry any of our ground meat. We bake everything and we run it through a squeezing method where all the fat water content and everything comes off of it. And then we season it. Um, and it's done through the oven and you can do, you know, even a residential oven, you can do four pans at a time in a residential oven. Um, you could do your ground turkey and your beef and your ground chicken all at the same time and pull all those things out. Wow. But people don't, they just don't know how to do anything more than, you know, do their turkey in the skillet. So, yeah, I think efficiency really is the, the secret sauce here. Yeah, it is. You know, um, as far as the variety situation, I often get this one as well. And what we recommend to people when they're trying to do meal prep on their own is to find the foods that you like stick with them, and then your variety comes from sauces and seasonings. Yes. Do you do something similar? Yes, that, and that's what I was saying. Like, you know, and we were talking about this before we got started, but um, chicken, rice, and broccoli doesn't have to be the devil. You know, it just, it's, it's how do you make it good? Some people like mustard. Some people like sriracha. Some people like jalapenos. You know, there are definitely ways to keep it interesting. Um, but also, too, you do have to be careful about what's in your sauces, you know, because mm -hmm. you can easily get off into the wrong stuff, especially sugars with sauces. But that is what I say too, sauces. Honestly, if you order from PowerFit and you like chicken, broccoli, and rice, there's 17 different options of sauce that you can choose from, but you're you're still eating chicken, broccoli, and rice. Right. You know, it's mm -hmm. just going to taste different every day. But that is the kicker, you know, yeah. is, is to just switch it up by a flavor. <clears throat> and, you know, it's really funny on the variety thing, it's so funny how people will say that they can't eat the same thing every day, but they'll go to Wendy's today and what a burger tomorrow. <laughs> it's or still Starbucks a, every morning. Yeah, yeah, it's still a burger and fries <laughs> and it's still a coffee. You <sighs> just flavored it a little bit. That is the hardest thing, honestly. Like, that is I the most it's like difficult. Ritual. It feels like it's just so ritualistic. Yeah. And it's just like, yeah. oh man, I go to Starbucks every day. So yeah, it's right. like, no, for sure. Yeah, it's easy. You know, back on the fat diet thing, though, the whole like, period of like if it fits in my macros can also be a little crazy and a little cringy kind of like dirty keto dieting because if you're looking at making healthy lifestyle changes the if it fits in your macros thing works like from the standpoint of you know staying within a certain calorie range and macros range to get to where you want to be but that means that you are able to have your cupcakes mm -hmm. and all of your stuff and so you you're essentially still bringing old habits into yeah, I remember new, new when, dieting. and I, I don't know, I'm assuming if it fits your macros was popular in the mid to 2010s yes. is kind of when it had its biggest heyday. And I remember that's when I first got into fitness yeah. also. And I followed that train for a while and I'm still understanding of that as well. And, and it does work. My current opinion on that is that you can do it. It, but if you're overdoing it, usually what's going to happen is you're going to find yourself very hungry all the time. Yeah. If you're actually staying within your macros on a not micronutrient and fiber rich whole foods diet, you're going to be ravenous. Yes. And that will catch up to you and cause you to overeat anyways. Yes. You know? Yeah, for sure. And I, what I will tell people is, if that's your goal, that's great. But that's the end goal, like getting ready to graduate because you understand macros type of, you know, lifestyle yes. for you. And that's okay. <clears throat> I, I I eat that way too. But I know by education what I'm eating and how much I can have, you know, so on and so forth. Um, even when I'm not like hard tracking macros and I'm off the rail because coaches go off the rail too, sure. you know. I like canes, <laughs> yeah. so I eat it sometimes, yeah, you know. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, but, yeah, it, it is hard 
I I remember, and I still have people that come to me that are from that era that are like, well, you know, I've just always read if it fits in my macros, you know, um, and some of the things that they're taking into their daily diet, and that's the thing, their daily diet are are not the jam. They're not what they're supposed to be. Yeah, I always tell everyone out. when you're starting this journey, it's kind of like going back to school. Yeah. Nobody wants to. It takes time. It's an investment. It's yeah. going to suck a little bit, but you don't have to do it forever. You do it anyways because you know it's better for your future. Right. Right. It's kind of the same situation here with the education thing. Um, tell me a little bit about how PowerFit specifically is able to offer all the variety that you guys do. I know you mentioned the sauces and that's one way, but sure. you guys are one of the few, probably only that I know of that I, I, do some of the items rotate. Is that accurate? Yeah. So we have things that have been on the menu since yeah. the beginning of time. They're considered our OGs at this point. Um, and then we have a weekly specials menu and that oh, okay. changes every week. How do you have so many items though? And so many options that are available every week? Well, if you ask my kitchen, we actually have the same 30 items okay. again, chicken, rice, and broccoli. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we have different sauces, you know? Um, so we're able to offer, offer variety too, and things like the cheeseburger bites and the beef bombs. Um, we took the beef bombs, you know, for people that ask it's the flavor of those is essentially Salisbury steak. So that's that. One of my favorites. Um, <laughs> but what we did with those items is we were able to figure out how, how I was able to figure out how to make them with egg whites. Um, so we were able to get higher protein, lower fat out of some of those favorites there. <laughs> um, but offering the variety in the sauces is honestly is honestly what hits home for power fit. That's what everybody loves is the sauces, mm -hmm. especially the honey mustard. That one is like the gold. Um, but being able to do that and maintain them, you know, two to two ounce cup, the specials are a little bit different. Those are our higher calorie specials because we actually put everything together on the plate. Um, and those are really there. Uh, a, they taste great, but it keeps our people that have been with us for years interested because we always have mm. something new going on. Mm -hmm. um, but the way that the menu was originally founded was taking some of America's most favorite items, like spaghetti is still one of our top sellers, the honey garlic chicken pasta. Um, That's Denver's favorite. We, <laughs> yeah. Mine, mine too. We, <laughs> yeah, we took those mm. items and figured out a way to be able to provide them so that people still get the fix of what they're wanting. You know, they're craving spaghetti or they're craving pasta. Um, but they're not going to overindulge and they're not going to overeat. So how long did it take to come up with, I know you said y'all started in 2018, but how long do you feel like it took to kind of figure it out? If that makes sense? Well, um, figuring it out, I would say, I, I would say two years. Cause the first two years, again, we were in the bodybuilding bikini competition world. So everything we did was still very dry measured you know, to the point, didn't have all of the extra stuff. Um, so I think the development of the menu really happened during COVID uh, for me. that mm -hmm. That's whenever we we really uh, heightened the, the menu. You made the pivot to like gin pop, yeah. you know, regular people that need to eat better to feel better and live better yes. type of situation. Yeah. What's next? Like what's going on in the future of PowerFit? You guys have four locations, you said, right? Mm -hmm. Plus the yeah. HQ. So uh, where, where's it going? I don't know. Right now we're being um, asked for in the Woodlands and Katy area and then Pasadena Deer Park keeps asking for a location. Um, so I don't know where we're going to go next. Uh, we partnered up. Uh, well, now we're in our second year with uh, Pretty Baked Sweets, which makes all of our protein snacks now. And, uh, and we have a division that does catering and, and Lindsay handles all of the unhealthy side of things. It okay. does an amazing job. So our partnership works great because she's very bright and pink and loves all of the things beautiful and fun. And then for me, I'm on the other side with the nutrition <laughs> and, <laughs> and uh, the health foods. Um, but we did that and that's been a really great model for us because uh, in today's economy, it's really hard to survive just like single handedly doing one thing. Um, so we have that. And for me, I am, I actually, like I said, I really want to pursue the academy, the PowerFit Academy, maybe that's what we'll call it, where we're able to 
to actually put our education out there for people to be able to access, even if they're not necessarily a client Mm -hmm. um, or they don't live in the Houston area. We decided to stay away from the mainstream competition of nationwide frozen meal prep shipping everything. Um, A, it's a multi-billion dollar business and you got to have very expensive equipment and, and, and it's, it's, there's a lot of fish in that sea. Um, so we really focus here on the Houston area. And I think the goal for PowerFit is to continue through word of mouth mostly to be able to grow outside of the League City, Perley and Friendswood, you know, area. Um, and the PowerFit East vibe has been really cool because everybody that's inside of those stores uh, makes their items in our kitchen too. So the protein cookies, cold pressed juices, the keto items that we do have in there, um, those items are all made you know, in-house too. So that's kind of the concept of the PowerFit meals, but, um, but yeah. Yeah. Before, before we found PowerFit, we tried a couple of the bigger brands and, uh, we much prefer the, the local, the food is better, feels fresher. Sure. Um, and just the options are better as well. You guys have more variety, which I'm sure you've heard a million times. <laughs> um, can you explain exactly how you, you mentioned the catering then you have PowerFit meals and you have PowerFit eats. Yeah. Can you just kind of Break that down for us real quick, exactly what that looks like, how it works. Yeah, so PowerFit Eats is the retail stores. that We have four of them, Pearland, Webster, Friendswood, and Nassau Bay right now. Um, those are places where you can go in, shop what's on the shelf, look at all the things that we have, put it in your cart, take it home with you. Obviously, you can't customize anything because they've already been made. Um, and then PowerFit Meals, you can order online. You can bring any custom diet to us. You can bring a plan from another coach. We work with Mike from Live Lean. He sends people over with their DEXA scans. Um, But it's a very customized service. Uh, We'll deliver to home. You can pick up from one of our stores. But the difference between the two is being able to have quick access to healthy stuff that's close to you. Um, And then the other one is to have delivery and and custom, you know, made. And then, of course, PowerFit Prep. PowerFit Meals is also where you can go to get your education and your nutrition help. Gotcha. And that's where the coaching comes into play, right? Yeah. I mean, I'd love to see some type of academy like that. And if there's anything that we can do to help out, um, we'd love to be, you know, to help out. Y'all have the equipment. Yeah. I don't know how to do any of that. I just have the the thoughts. Yeah. Let's do it. Whatever we can do. Like if you want to have like a, a fitness piece of it. Yeah, you know, know with the whole thing, we can definitely. Um, I would definitely like to lend a hand for that. That's yeah. that seems like super cool. And like you were talking about, the education is very, very important. A yeah. lot of people just don't know these things, and you don't know what you don't know. So. Yeah, right. you don't know yeah. what you don't know. You blew my mind with like cooking your ground meat like in the oven to make it faster. Yes. Yeah, like that's crazy. I'm still on, I'm still on like level one with the air fryer, man. Yeah. Like what's going on here? <laughs> well, and that's yeah. why I would love to do it because it's just like rattle off the brain, you know, type mm-hmm. stuff, and it's so helpful. And um, I, I would love to do that, but I I can talk about food and I can make food all day long. Mm-hmm. But don't ask me to put stuff on the internet. I mean, oh, that's yeah. not that this podcast. That's stuff, what you have a Sean for. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Yeah. That's why I'm like, yes, let's yeah. do it because yeah. that's I have I have dreams. I probably even have 20 topics of things to talk about, but I don't know how to get them online. Yeah, for sure. I mean, whatever we can do to help out with that, yeah, let us know. Sure. We, we'd love to to be a part of. Uh, of anything that is helping people, specifically Houston, um, you know, our our mission here is to help Houston make its way up the ladder of health and fitness, right? Yeah, and exactly. nutrition has such a big part of that. Um, I don't know if you know, I lost almost 100 pounds myself, all nutrition, and then I started working awesome. out afterwards. And so I'm very passionate about the nutrition side yeah. of health and fitness myself as well. So um <clears throat> Anything we missed? Anything you want to talk about, cover, Sean, questions? I did have one question. Sure. Do you think that um, PowerFit's model could work in a restaurant setting? So mm-hmm. we're actually looking at a place right now um, that we may or may not take on as the first PowerFit Cafe. Um we're trying to figure out the right place to put it. I've had this. This isn't where the location is, but I've had my eye on the 96 HEB area for a long time. Because mm-hmm. have you ever been to the Nassau Bay store? Yes, that's where we pick up from. Oh, okay, because you know it's like little, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's 400 square feet. Mm-hmm. Um, so I have thought about it, and I know that there's not a ton of health food options. There's there's plenty out there, um, but. Yes, I would love to be able to do that at some point. Now, mm-hmm. dipping off into the restaurant industry as opposed to the to-go industry that we're in now, two completely different things. Um, but it's definitely on my radar to do. Okay. I'm, I'm waiting on the economy to kind of re- 
figure out what it's doing first. Yeah, no. Because the cost of opening anything right now is very, very expensive. Yeah. Um, But yeah, at some point, I would love to be able to have, you know, essentially like the Cracker Barrel Power Fit. So you go in, you can buy stuff, you can look at all the different health things we have. Um, but you can also eat while you're there. Yeah, so. cool. Yeah, it is very difficult. We're looking into opening our second location at the moment. Yeah. And uh, the costs are... It's crazy. ...is very difficult. Yeah, insurance alone yeah. is like three times this year. But And we do have our cafe in Friendswood. That's where we make all our wraps, salads, and okay. soups and stuff. Um, so it's, we, all, it's all cold or...? Uh, no, it's not all cold. Well, oh, okay. the soups aren't. Um, the salads and wraps are cold. And... Uh, we don't sell a ton of that in the store. A lot of that is you just go in and you order it, mm-hmm. but we sell a ton of that inside of, we're inside of NASA space station. Mm-hmm. Um, oh. So we have, we have a, a cafe set up in there and that's where a lot of those cafe goods go to, but those cafe goods do not get enough recognition. Like they're mm-hmm. really good. The, the lady I told you is my, my founding first member. She heads that kitchen. Oh, cool. And it is amazing. <laughs> I will yeah. give all props to her. Yeah. Those wraps and salads and soups are so good, but that, is what has prompted us to think about opening up a cafe Yeah, because we would take those items that are already developed and just put them into a setting where people could come in probably would just do brunch and lunch mm-hmm. and uh, leave everybody to <laughs> shop in the stores for dinner. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Cause that's a lot to keep up with, mm-hmm. but um, yeah, I would love to open a cafe at some point. Well, Hopefully. we're looking forward to it. So yeah. Uh, yeah, I'll definitely go and check it out. Okay. I, I've, I'm a huge fan. Uh, as I was saying earlier, I was kind of gushing about the meals, but uh, having an option that provides you a healthy meal. Cause I'm a, um, I'm a big meal, simple fan too. I really like meal simples yeah. and it's like, I, have um, I'm not the, I, I, I guess I am kind of busy here and there, you know, I'm working at the gym and I'll do work on the side. And so it's like trying to find a healthy meal in between that can be tough. So it's yeah. like, but it's not impossible though. And, um, I think that, you know, what you're doing is, is truly, truly helpful for people Thank to you. live a healthy life and, um, really reach those goals. So. Yeah. I think the biggest thing, like the biggest takeaway is, you know, you have to invest in your health or you're going to invest in your health later. That's right. Mm -hmm. You have a medical You pay for it now or you pay for it later. Yeah, you Mm -hmm. pay for it now, you pay for it later. And sometimes, you know, people will will balk a little bit about the cost to eat healthy, whether they're doing it themselves or they're, you know, looking for someone to help them out. Um, But there are consequences to not eating healthy and not exercising. I was was reading an insert – I started following that new Headway app and was like reading. I've heard of it. I just started, right? Okay. And the first insert was about how everything that you take into your body comes back out into the work that you do. You know, like if you choose to never work out and you don't eat right, you know, you you deal with the consequences of that, whether you can't focus at work or you Mm -hmm. irritable with your kids or like whatever is going on. And it's so true. Your body really is your temple. So. Sometimes people are like, I cannot imagine spending that much money on eating healthy, but you know, then 10 years later they have diabetes and it's difficult. That is even more expensive. Yeah. We always say you only get out of your body what you put in it. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's essentially what the, uh, the, the, um, what you call it? The snobs is what. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. 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 Yeah, So, but it's important. It is really important and small changes. That's all you need. Yeah. Just just the small changes are so important. Uh, I always say small changes, small results, big changes, big results. Start small, work your way into them. Um, well, where can, uh, you mentioned, is there somewhere online, a website or anything like that where people can, you said you can order online. You mentioned the locations already. What's the easiest way to, to get in some meals? Uh, so you can see everything that we do by going to powerfitprep.com. Uh, we're going to have a new website coming out before October and we'll have a new menu. You'll be able to see all the things about PowerFit Eats. The other tabs are already up about nutrition and, and ordering, um, but I'm really excited for our new website. It's been it's been a long time needed, so it's underway right now, and we're working on that. But you can go to PowerFitPrep.com and see what we have up right now, and uh, yeah, you can go from there. Awesome. Well, guys, if you need help with your meal prep, um, check out PowerFit. If you need help with your fitness, obviously uh, OTG Fitness is here to help you out, and it is our goal to help Houston make it the way up, make its way up the ladder of health and fitness. So yes. um, people like Kayla here can help us do that. And if there's anything else we can do. Let us know, and we'll see you next time. Peace out.